Hi everyone, welcome back. We are still in our Wisdom is Supreme series. And today we're going to be focusing on Proverbs 16 still. And with verses 17 to 33. So let's get started as we begin and unpack God's Word in this very, very good time of reading the Word of God. Father, I thank you for those who are watching, and I ask you to bless them. I ask you to bless them and open up their hearts and eyes and ears of understanding, God, so that we may know you better and that we may be a wise people who will walk in your ways. And I pray that all glory and honor will come to go to you, Jesus. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Proverbs 16, verses 17 to 33. For those that don't know me, my name is Mary Beth Pecora, and my blog is mybelovedsvoice.com. So as I began focusing on this, the, the final chapter and bringing it to a close of Proverbs 16, I kept hearing this phrase, and that phrase was, it's time to turn the bend. And if you go on the, on the blog, you'll be able to see a picture that I chose <clears throat> of a bend on a roadway. And it's, it's, it's making a turn. But there's little arrows pointing in the right direction. So as we proceed, the very first verse that opens up, in Proverbs 16, 17 is this. It says, The highway of the upright avoids evil, and he who guards his way guards his life. So we are told that whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. That's in verse 20 of Proverbs 16. So what, what does the word heed mean? I looked it up and it means this, to pay attention and to take notice of. So if we pay attention, the scripture is saying that we will, if we pay attention to instruction, that we will prosper. It doesn't get any better than that. God just doesn't give us his word for us to just read. What it does is as we read it, and we ask Holy Spirit to open up our eyes and to deposit what he wants to deposit. It literally changes our life because it is alive and active and is, it will never return. God's word will never return void. It will not, it will not return empty. So I'm getting all strapped off track let's reel it back in the last couple of times that we talked about we talked about being wise in heart and to be discerning discerning so how can we do that here's what it says in verse verse 21 it says the wise in heart are called discerning and pleasant words will promote instruction so what are pleasant words Here's how, here's how the scripture defines pleasant words in verse 24 of Proverbs 16. It says, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and listen to this part, and healing to the bones. So using pleasant words are not only sweet to our soul, but they bring healing all the way down to the bone. What's the, what's the function of our bones in, in our natural bodies, in our physical bodies? They provide support for other parts of our bodies. They provide movement in our bodies. They provide protection to many of all of our organs, many of our organs, and they provide a house for bone marrow, can make blood cells, and they, they store mineral minerals like like calcium and, and phosphorus so from the list above the list that i mentioned we can see that bones serve many vital functions in our body so what what am i saying what's the spiritual analogy here the body of christ receives healing 
when we encourage and build each other up with our pleasant words. That healing brings support, protection, and good, strong growth spiritually. And that all comes just from our words, which are like a honeycomb. And remember, the bees are the ones that produce the honeycomb. They produce, they make the honeycomb to produce honey. And honey has many healing properties in it. Think about how when we get a sore throat, how it soothes and helps to heal our sore throat. But it has other, if you Google the word, the word honey, and what it, how it heals, or it has many healing properties in it. So my question rhetorically to you is, do our words provide healing that are sweet to our soul and to the soul of others? So as we turn the bend, let's look at some questions that can help us turn together. Number one, how hungry are we for the things of God? And number two, are we moving and working for the Lord in the way that we should be? So as, as we continue to read on in Proverbs 16, it also says this in verse 26, says the laborer's appetite works for him. His hunger drives him on. So here comes another final question. What things are in your heart that you're yearning for? Because that yearning is called your appetite. And a very wise woman of God said this about, about feeding our soul. And this, this is a profound quote. She said, what you feed your soul is what you will harvest with your actions. And the name of that godly woman was Corey Ten Boom. And for those of you who don't know who Corey Ten Boom is, Corey Ten Boom was a Dutch watchmaker who worked with her father and the rest of her family of hiding the Jews in their home during the Holocaust and World War II. And she became a Christian and wrote several books. But that's a profound statement that she said about what we feed our souls with and how it will become our harvest through our actions. What type of harvest are we creating for ourselves in these next in this next verse? Because when I saw this, <clears throat> it goes right into to teaching us about a harvest. Proverbs 16 verse 28, listen to what it says. A perverse man stirs up dissension and a gossip separates close friends. Harvesting dissension and separation is not the kind of harvest that God desires us to have because they will not produce a crop, nor will they produce a good, work, good reward. Yes, folks, as we grow in the things of the Lord, And turn the, turning the bend will become very evident to us at some point in our lives. A bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn. Make the correct turn and turn away from those things that you need to turn away on from, but stay on the highway of God. Because here's what it says in Proverbs 15, verse 19, the second half of that verse, I'm going to call it 19b. It says that the path of the upright is an open highway. So in the natural, an open highway for us is to proceed full speed ahead. The open highways are being laid and paved as we proceed ahead. Yep, even through the wilderness. 
because the prophets proclaimed it long, long ago by saying this. Isaiah 40 verse 3 says, The voice of, of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So I want to exhort you today as I close by saying, Saints of God, full speed ahead. In Jesus' name I pray. Have a good night. Have a good day. Remember to check out the blog, mybelovedsvoice.com. Until we chat again, bye-bye.